Beijing just saw the launch of Limex Oli, a 5'5 humanoid packed with 31 degrees of freedom. It's about to host the first ever Olympic venue football match between fully autonomous robots. A massive new robot mall is now selling everything from mechanical butlers to Einstein lookalikes. And in California, a drone just got its brain built by another robot 20 times faster than humans could manage. It's getting intense, so let's talk about it. Let's start with a launch that's been getting a lot of attention. Limex Dynamics just unveiled their new flagship humanoid, the Limex Oli. This isn't just a rehash of their earlier work, it's the evolution of what they started with, the Limex CL1 back in December 2023, but now it's a full-size, ready-to-work platform. We're talking 1 meter 65 tall, which is about 5 foot 5, weighing in heavier than a lot of other humanoids in development right now, and running with 31 active degrees of freedom, and that's not even counting the end effectors. The CL1 was more of a research biped, no functional hands, nothing you could really put into a real world task scenario. Oli changes that. It's got a fully modular hardware software architecture, which means if you're a developer or a researcher, you can swap out components without redesigning the whole robot. Two finger grippers, sure. Full dexterous five finger hands, also an option. You can even plug in third party peripherals, microphones, extra cameras, tactile sensors, IMUs, LiDAR, all built in with well-defined interfaces so you're not hacking around the system just to get it to work. They're offering it in light, EDU, and super editions, each aimed at slightly different use cases, from training and validation of perception and motion algorithms to full-scale interaction control in real environments. The open SDK is where it gets interesting. You've got access to full body state, all the sensor data, joint level control, and task orchestration that makes it just as suitable for teleoperation systems as it is for imitation learning pipelines. You don't need to rewrite core architecture. It's designed for quick build test deploy cycles on top of that, Oli integrates cloud-based APIs with local control so you get a unified environment. Motion libraries and controller modules can be pushed over the air so developers can either grab preset motions or push their own custom logic without touching the physical robot. And yes, it supports onboard large language models for natural language interaction, plus multi-stream sensor fusion for high-level planning and embodied reasoning the public debut is happening at the World Robot Conference in Beijing this week, so we'll probably see live demos soon. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? You're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed, and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple, proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. Speaking of Beijing, there's another massive robotics event lined up. The first ever World Humanoid Robot Games happening from the 14th to the 17th of August at the National Speed Skating Oval. This is not a small gathering, it's 280 teams from 16 countries across five continents, bringing more than 500 humanoids from 127 brands. That's 26 disciplines, 538 events crammed into three days, each day split into morning and afternoon competition sessions. The big headline is, the world's first fully autonomous five versus five humanoid robot football match. 10 humanoid robots, no human control, all AI driv, swarm intelligence and collaborative decision making in real time. This will be staged in an actual Olympic venue, which adds another layer of spectacle. This follows a test run at the Robo League final, where Tsinghua University's THU robotics team beat China Agricultural University's Mountain Sea team 5 to 3 in a fully autonomous 3 on 3 match. That match already marked China's first real autonomous humanoid football competition. But football is just the start. They're running a humanoid 100 meter dash with 90 teams vying for the fastest robot title. The top six finishers from the humanoid half marathon back in April will do a showcase run. And then there's freestyle combat, which is pulling in serious names. Six Olympic medalists, including judo gold medalist Yan Shuli, swimmer Zhang Lin, 
and synchronized swimming silver medalist Chang Si, teaming up with robot squads. That's a mix of robotics engineering and high-level athletics you don't see anywhere else. And before anyone jumps in to point out that I'm saying football instead of soccer, here's the deal. That's the term the organizers and the companies at the event are using, so I'm just keeping it consistent. Part of the legacy of this event will be the Beijing Humanoid Robot Training Base, which has just been unveiled, and the Panda Eye Stadium, the first professional humanoid football stadium. Panda Eye's design is striking, a geodesic dome made from ETFE membrane, regulating temperature, humidity, and cleanliness to lab-grade levels, but still letting in sunlight, moonlight, and even starlight. Right next to it is Roboland, a human-robot integration-themed camp that's intended to grow into a hub for the humanoid robot industry and foster international collaboration. Now, Beijing isn't just about the competitions. They're also moving hard on the consumer side. A new store called Robot Mall has opened, and it's basically the robotics world's answer to a car dealership. More than 100 types of robots are on sale, from mechanical butlers to humanoid replicas of historical figures like Albert Einstein, Prices start around 278 US dollars and go up into the millions for the high-end systems. This place isn't just selling, they're offering spare parts, maintenance, and a hands-on experience where you can interact with everything from robot dogs to chess-playing androids. The mall is right next to a themed restaurant where robots cook your food and serve it at the table. It's all part of China's push into robotics, backed by over $20 billion in subsidies in the past year alone, and plans for a 1 trillion yuan fund to fuel AI and robotics startups. More than 200 domestic and overseas brands are represented here, and the opening is timed perfectly with the World Robot Conference. That conference itself is huge. Over 1,500 exhibits from more than 200 robotics companies all on display just as Beijing gears up for the humanoid robot games. And while all that's going on, there's also some news from the AI-driven R&D side that's a little more, let's say, sci-fi adjacent. A professor at the University of California, Peter Burke, has been working on something that's raising eyebrows. And yes, the Terminator comparisons are already coming in. His project is a robot that can use generative AI models to build the brain of another robot with minimal human input. The term robot here applies in two layers. First, it's the AI model, ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, running in the cloud on a laptop generating code. Second, it's the physical machine, in this case, a drone with a Raspberry Pi 02W on board as the main computer. What Burke built is called WebGCS, a control system that runs entirely on board the drone, hosting its own control dashboard through a small, Flask-based web server on the Pi. No external mission control software like Mission Planner or Q Ground Control needed. The setup divides control into three layers. The lower brain is firmware for basic flight control. The intermediate brain handles live mapping, mission planning, and settings. The higher brain uses AI to help the drone avoid obstacles without human intervention, though there's still the option for manual control if needed. The goal was to have AI models generate all the code for these layers in sprints step by step until the whole system worked. They ran multiple development sprints using different tools, VS Code, Cursor, Windsurf, and different AI models. Some sessions ran into limits, like Claude's context window cutting things short. Gemini 2.5 had its own hiccups. Cursor got them a functional prototype but they had to refactor to fit the model's token limits. The breakthrough came in the fourth sprint using Windsurf, which got them a working WebGCS with 10,000 lines of code generated in about 100 hours over roughly two and a half weeks. For comparison, Burke says a similar project they'd built earlier called CloudStation took about four years of human development time. That's 20 times longer than what the AI-assisted approach just pulled off. Hans Fevry, the CEO of GeoLava, called it a fascinating step toward where spatial intelligence tech is heading, but also stressed that safety boundaries need to be in place for systems like this. Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly, behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. 
It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. Between the competitions, the consumer push with Robot Mall, and the AI-driven development breakthroughs, it's pretty clear that Beijing right now is one of the most important places on the planet for anyone paying attention to where robotics is headed. And honestly, if this is the state of things in 2025, the next couple of years are going to be wild. Let me know what you think in the comments, hit that like button if you found this interesting, and subscribe so you don't miss the next update. Catch you in the next one.